um, so, so, so what we are going to do is we will uh, record this, you know, make this available. Uh, I'll, I'll send out a link right after this meeting, uh, so, so you can have access to uh, what went on. Um, so, uh, hello everyone. Uh, welcome to uh, Ms. Saga Big Data Group. Uh, thanks for uh, joining. Um, the physical meetups uh, so far have all been in Mississauga, you know, uh, as the name, you know, suggests it's Mississauga Big Data Group, but, you know, it's not, it doesn't have to be confined to, uh, you know, one location. Uh, but the physical meetings, uh, the, the plan is to actually have them in Mississauga. The virtual uh, meetings, you know, like, uh, will allow anyone to join from anywhere. Uh, we plan to do this meet once a month, uh, the physical meet once a month, and uh, the virtual meetups uh, like this one uh, can be scheduled as frequently as uh, we need uh, for the, the stuff we plan to do. Um, and as I said, you know, uh, you have the option to get involved in the development of the project, and, uh, you know, if necessary, we can schedule more frequent uh, you know, web meetings of this kind. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah the, the, Raj, the audio is on, so are you... Uh, well, I don't know how to get to Raj, just, just let me... Uh, okay. Oh, okay, so so I I guess uh, Raj, are you in? Uh, you can unmute yourself at star six. Uh, okay, so well, I guess Raj will join. So, um, uh, okay. Hi Kumar, this is Shashank. I had similar problem and I had to dial phone. That's what I was. Uh, oh, you dialed via phone, you mean? Yeah, yeah, this is Shashank. I had same problem. I couldn't hear anything through my laptop. So I finally oh, okay. dialed through phone and then it worked. So that's what I was suggesting, Raj, that he can dial. Oh, is it? Oh, okay, sure. Okay. So, so okay. Uh, thanks, thanks for suggesting that, Shashank. Okay, so so no. let's uh, let's get started. Uh, Raj, are you on? Okay. Uh, now, now this uh, is our fourteenth uh, session. You know, a few of them have been physical, as I said, and there's a virtual uh, meetup. Um, <clears throat> So um, I hope the audio is clear, uh, and I hope the screen is visible. If not, uh, uh, j just send out a chat message or something, you know, um, uh, 
uh, you know, we can see what uh, we can do. So these are the key command, keypad commands that you have. Uh, if you'd like, uh, well, the star six, you know, this is the most important one that you will need uh, to mute and unmute yourself. It's it's a toggle. Okay. Um, now, before uh, we start, I, I, I thought uh, we should uh, acknowledge the free material that's made available by this uh, Stanford team. Uh, what, what we're going to discuss uh, today, you know, after an, an outline of the project uh, is basically a couple of concepts from uh, this book called Mining of Massive Datasets. And uh, the website uh, that you see here has uh, the free downloadable uh, book. Uh, this book is a free download. Uh, you know, you can get that. And there's a lot of other stuff on the website uh, that's very interesting. Uh, you may want to visit this. Uh, as I uh, said, you know, this is a group effort. Uh, you know, uh, today's presentation uh, you know, has a very, a very limited objective. Uh, that is to initiate one uh, project uh, that we can uh, do together. Uh, the larger objective is to actually practice aspects of big data, and that means you know the machine learning algorithms, the uh, the technology uh, that uh, that's actually the current ones and stuff like that. The, the, this. Well, both of these are very wide topics, and uh, it, it needs uh, you know months and months of preparation to get an insight into uh, you know any of these. So, so uh, that's the larger objective. So, if you have some topic to present uh, in in this wide uh, area, uh, if you have something to present, you know, uh, please uh, let me know, and we can schedule a presentation. Uh, either physical or one of these virtual meetups. Um, so, well, it it could be the objective of your presentation could be uh, something that caters to uh, this limited goal that we have today, uh, which is one project, one specific project, or it could be uh, the larger one as well. And the agenda for today uh, is, uh, is is basically uh, an introduction of what uh, we plan to do, uh, and, and uh, I'll, uh, I'll I'll actually then introduce uh, introduce a data set uh, that we plan to do analysis on. Uh, it's 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 not a very uh, large data set. Uh, it's about some. Uh, uh, some discussion forum, uh, you know, that's uh, an extract of all the data on it. Um, the, the size of this is about 11 gig when compressed. It's not large. It, uh, you cannot say it's uh, big data, but this should be enough for, uh, you know, practicing something. You know, once we develop the uh, the code, we should potentially be able to run this on uh, any large cluster. And I'll talk briefly about uh, the the first iteration of the project. And uh, you know, I have uh, a couple of versions of uh, you know how we can plan this this out. I have plan A and plan B. Plan A is more detailed. Uh, you know, this is if you have enough uh, interest. Uh, you know, enough number of people who would actually want to. Uh, uh, you know, get their uh, contributions into the project in terms of uh, you know analysis, development, and things like that. Um, or we'll have a pared down version, which is Plan B, uh, and then we'll uh, uh, just briefly go through the components uh, uh, that we could develop and uh, the methods, uh, and we'll. Uh, Quickly go over the algorithm, uh, and and then you know we'll talk about the roles. You know, if if somebody wants to 
uh, volunteer and, and say, you know, uh, you know, you, you, you'd want to get involved in in coding or, you know, writing descriptions of the algorithms or reviewing code or testing and things like that. Uh, you could uh, you could say that, you know, you could identify uh, the role that you would want to play. So, so this is the uh, agenda, basically. Um, now, uh, this is an introduction of what we do in these these meetups. Uh, you know, um, so in the earlier meetings, we were we everybody uh, agreed that doing a data analysis project on public data set would be the right. A way of uh, learning and practicing uh, big data uh, analysis and uh, you know uh, development of uh, uh, you know such uh, applications um, and you know that's what we plan to do and uh, we have a variety of data sets uh, to choose from um, and you know we have a variety of questions we may ask uh, on such data sets you know it depends on you know what kind of data you're looking at and uh, and also you have a variety of algorithms uh, that can address the the questions uh, differently so so there's uh, there's a lot there and we just have to start somewhere uh, so so we will start uh, this project by that little data set that I said. Um, uh, it's called table cell on table talk data. That's what it is. Uh, it appears uh, there used to be a discussion forum on on this uh, website salon.com, which is actually uh, you know online news and entertainment website, and uh, that went offline. I think in 2011 or so, or, or 2013, I don't remember when. And you know, they just archived all of the chat content there uh, and made it available for uh, public use. Um, so I mean, I just came across this. I thought this would be something interesting that we can look at. And the data there is basically, uh, you know, you have a freewheeling discussions on a lot of topics. Uh, as I said, it's not a very large data set. Um, so, so if you look at this, uh, at the data set, you will see uh, many folders there. These are all uh, files. So you have uh, many folders, and within those folders, you have a lot of HTML files. And in HTML files, uh, you basically have a topic and uh, all the discussion that went on on that topic can be seen in the HTML file. You basically have um, a user ID and a timestamp when the post was made and a text that follows that. So, so that basically is uh, the data set we are looking at. And the, the initial goal is to you know, run a uh, typical data analysis project, a time-bound one. Um, we, we just had to fix the time and, you know, complete, uh, you know, if, if we can't polish all the uh, corners, that's fine, but, you know, we'll just get something done uh, in a time-bound way. So, so that's the uh, initial goal. Uh, so before that, we, on this data set, you know, we had to decide on the uh, set of questions uh, we think an, uh, our analysis will yield answers to. You know, basically, it's actually it goes both ways. You know, we uh, we look at some tools, uh, some algorithms, and see what kind of questions we can ask uh, that those things will answer, and then we try to improve upon our questions, and then the algorithms as well. So. So I mean, it'll go in cycles, you know, if we take this into further iterations. Um, and, and to begin with, uh, we should have some simple 
uh, algorithms which uh, every, everyone can understand. So you don't want to be bogged down by the complexity of an algorithm. Uh, you know, uh, by, you know, when when one of the goals is actually to understand the uh, the distributed programming paradigm as well. So so it has to be, uh, it, and it shouldn't be toy programs as well. So you're looking at moderate complexity, and then you know a moderate uh, amount of effort that's needed to implement the uh, algorithms. Uh, and then, you know, once we are done, we look at the uh, results, and uh, we'll make an assessment of, you know, what went right and what did not go right, and we'll improve upon the goals, the methods, etc., uh, in the other iterations. Um, now, the the choice it it looks like for big data problems, you know. People are moving out of MapReduce, and uh, Spark seems to be the in thing nowadays. So, uh, so Apache Spark running on Hadoop Yarn. So, looks like that's the choice, and and you know, we, we can we can we should be starting uh, with that. Um, when you code your applications uh, that run on Spark. You have a choice of going with Scala or Java or Python. Uh, I guess to some extent R. Uh, so we we don't have to make this choice right away, but you know we can. Well, this is something that needs to be done before we uh, decide to code. And in the in this iteration, we will use some machine uh, learning libraries uh, that are packaged with Spark. It's called MLlib. And uh, later, you know, there are other libraries, you know, depending on if we move on to other data sets that need uh, graph analysis, for example, you have, uh, you know, GraphX and stuff like that. Or if we go with uh, uh, analyzing streaming data, we can look at Spark streams. Um, and we will, it's easy to set up an environment uh, on AWS, so so we will provision uh, you know uh, our you know infrastructure on AWS. Um, as as individual developers, you know if if you are developing some code, uh, it's easy to just set this up uh, with with four clusters or so, and. You know, it, for for something like ten, fifteen dollars a month, you know, you can do a lot of stuff. You know, I have a four-node cluster, and I spend about ten dollars every month. And going forward, you know, we can expand the algorithms we run on this data set. Uh, well, these are the choices you basically have. Uh, we could uh, get to other data sets, run uh, a modified version of uh, the code that we develop here, or we could get to other uh, paradigms like uh, streaming. You know, uh, you have Twitter data streams uh, anyway. That's uh, you know that's something that we could think about, and move on to other kinds of data. For example, you know, image data and things like that. So those are there are many possibilities. You know, uh, we don't have to, uh, you know, think a lot about that right now. And and for the plan A that I I just uh, mentioned, plan A is going to be elaborate. You know, if we can do this only if this generates enough interest in this group, and if we have enough hands. And plan B is just uh, a limited one. Uh, the idea is just to produce the core uh, things uh, and maybe a write-up. So uh, plan A, you know, we will we'll, uh, have a document that describes the problem, you know, the data, the, uh, the questions we seek answers to, the details of the algorithm that's implemented, 
and it also describes the output. Uh, we could also add to this, <clears throat> you know, uh, data visualization of the output data, you know, if that is something that uh, we need, you know. So, so these are the areas uh, that we can we can do. Uh, and, and the second item that I have here, uh, have each developer create a development environment on Amazon AWS. So this is something that's needed. It's either on AWS or something else of our developer's choice. Uh, I guess AWS is the easiest, uh, and it's accessible from anywhere. Um, and create a common environment where all the pieces developed by the developers. Like if we have uh, in a few developers, like let's say four or five, who would be interested in actually developing the code, you know, integrating these, putting them on one common environment, and making sure everything runs, uh, you know, that's an effort uh, that's worth doing. Uh, we could do that, and uh, you know, uh, what, for in order for that to happen, <clears throat> we should have, we should be able to set up a. Uh, good administration process for you know administering the user IDs and stuff like that. Uh, I'm not very conversant with uh, that part, you know, having the, well the administration part. So, but, but still, uh, but I think you know somebody from the group uh, would be an expert. That's my hope. Uh, and this uh, and the last item here, you know, we will use GitHub and make sure the code is available for everyone to look at, review, and improve. So defects, uh, defect management, you know, that's something, you know, again, all this if you have enough hands. Uh, and the other, this activity is a core. We have to build a component that pre-processes the data. So this data uh, cannot be, uh, you know, read into, uh, Spark data structures right away. So we had pre-processed that in such a way that uh, we transform the HTML content and into some way uh, where, where you know it's easy to pull them into uh, Spark RDDs. RDDs are uh, the basic uh, data structures that Spark provides. Uh, the fundamental data structures they're called uh, resilient uh, distributed data. Uh, uh, data sets, um, and so so this so, so if we, if we have the data in such a way that it's easy to read them into an RDD, then what follows after that is just a meticulous implementation implementation of the algorithm. Uh, so that's a core activity. We need to build a pre-process pre-process uh, pre-processor, and. Uh, um, we need to build the main component that does the uh, core, ac uh, core activity of analyzing the data, you know. Uh, and then the uh, data visualization part, which is the last item that I have here. So that's, uh, that's optional, you know, that's, again, you know, this is something that we, we could do if we have enough hands. Plan B, as I said, is just a pared down version of plan A. Um, so this is about the uh, the plan for the project, uh, and what I uh, want to do now is to actually go through uh, the algorithm. Uh, so before that, uh, I just want to ask if anybody has any questions. So if if you have, you know, you can unmute yourself by pushing star six, and then you know you can you can talk. So any questions so far? So it looks like we have uh, none. Uh, so we, we will, we will uh, uh, move ahead. So um, some of you may be familiar 
uh, with this uh, with the uh, with this algorithm it's basically a text mining algorithm uh, uh so i'll i'll just go through that and you know i'll also uh, provide pointers to reference data you know it's basically the same uh, book uh, that i mentioned at the beginning of the uh, uh presentation so the the motivation for uh, well the problem that we are considering is, is basically this if you have a collection of documents find pairs that are similar like uh, what we uh, define by similarity what, what we mean by similarity is 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 going to be made clear um, in our case the we can think of each uh, message in the dis in the discussion forum as a document uh, but this can be generalized to uh, any documents um, mining of massive data sets as I mentioned uh, you know that's a free download uh, we should thank the authors for providing this and there are a lot of other goodies on this website you need to check this out um, so, so basically, chapter three from this book is uh, a part of that chapter. is is what we're going to go through now. Uh, so, it's it's basically in order to investigate the uh, question of similarity of uh, documents, of pairs of documents, we need to define certain concepts. Uh, the first concept is called uh, jacquard similarity so jacquard similarity is basically defined as this you, if you have two sets s and t uh, jacquard similarity you know which is written down as uh, sim s comma t is basically the size of the intersection of the sets divided by the size of the union of the sets so so, so what this just says is, you know, what proportion of these two sets have common elements? So, so well, that that's the uh, idea of this uh, Jacquard similarity. Now, uh, if 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 we need to use this on documents, uh, we need to actually arrive at sets starting from each document. So if you have a document, we can't use that document as a set. We can't have, a, there's no um, uh, natural definition of intersection of two documents. So you need to introduce uh, certain structures to uh, to actually employ this, uh, this concept of similarity uh, on documents. So, so what we are going to do is, uh, what follows, uh, you know, is, is encapsulated in this big picture. So, uh, every document is made to go through a process called shingling. Uh, shingling basically is identifying or arriving at the set of all substrings in the document of length k. So, so the first substring is, you know, uh, the substring that starts from byte uh, or character one to character k. The second is, uh, you know, character I mean, uh, characters two to character k plus one. The third is character three plus to k plus two, etc. So, so you you will make a set of all these substrings, and each such substring is called a shingle. And uh, to to be specific, uh, if you want to uh, uh, see, I mean, if you want to specify how uh, what the size of each shingle is, you'll just uh, prefix the name uh, with K. So you'll just say K shingle. And once we have the shingles, working with shingles uh, is actually going to be uh, you know, very compute intensive. You will have too many substrings, um, and uh, you know it, it needs a lot of uh, compute power. So, 
So what we will do is we will uh, take those shingles and run something called min hashing uh, on all the shingle sets. So this is something we are going to define. Uh, so once you do min hashing, what you end up with is a set of signatures of a fixed length. And each signature will uh, will correspond to a document. So if you have a million documents, you are looking at a million of these signatures. Each signature will be of some specific length. And even working with signatures directly is, is going to be uh, difficult. You know, it's very compute intensive. Uh, we will do one more, we'll employ one more hashing technique where we will uh, we will actually weed out all, uh, I mean, a lot of pairs that are obviously not candidates for comparison. So that is, you know, we will actually identify those pairs that are very likely uh, to be candidate pairs for, uh, for uh, being similar documents. So that technique is called locality sensitive hashing. So if we, if we implement this, basically we'll be writing code for shingling, we'll be writing code for min hashing, we'll be writing code for locality sensitive hashing. So these are the main main things. So once we have this, we have, we'll have candidate pairs, you know, the set of such pairs will be much smaller than the set of all possible pairs that you can think of. So if you have a million documents, you will be looking at like half a trillion pairs. Uh, th that is the set of all possible pairs. And, and uh, comparing so many is, is not a possibility. Um, you know, but, but if, you, if you identify candidate pairs, you know, you will probably be looking at a few millions instead of half a trillion, and and that's that makes this uh, this whole process very useful. So, uh, well, a, a few more things on Jacquard similarity. Like we we just saw Jacquard similarity as you know the ratio of the size of intersection to the size of the union. Um, uh, and when you say sets, you're talking about collections that do not have duplicates. Um, Jacquard similarity has one more variant called Jacquard bag, bag similarity. Uh, Jacquard bag similarity basically uh, allows repetitions. That, that's all the difference is. So if you take two sets, say A, B, C, D, E, F, and A, C, F, G, H, I, J, the Jacquard similarity is three by 10 because the intersection is ACF and the union is this. Uh, you're looking at the size of these. The three elements there, the size is three. There are 10 elements here, the size is 10. So the Jacquard similarity between these two sets is three by 10. If you're looking at bag sim uh, Jacquard bag similarity, uh, you are allowing for repetitions and the intersection in this case, for example, is two A's. And you have a B here, there's no B here, so in the intersection it doesn't uh, you know, appear. Uh, and you have one C, etc. So you get the idea. So this is Jacquard bag similarity. Now, a a document is basically, uh, this is a repetition of what I said earlier, is just a, you can think of a document as a character string. A K shingle is basically any substring of length K. And shingling a document is, is basically making the set of all K shingles of the document. And so, but before we shingle, you know, you have to do some pre-processing. For example, in HTML data, you know, we may extract data, uh, text out of HTML. Uh, you would not uh, push HTML tags also into the shingling process. 
Uh, and also, if you have new line characters, you may replace them with uh, space characters, uh, tabs with space, and things like that. And you know, uh, we can also think about what needs to be done with the punctuation marks. Uh, you know, maybe remove them. Uh, you need to do all of this before you start shingling the documents. And the 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 idea of Jacquard similarity is basically to look at cache angles of documents and see what the intersection is. So so you will have a cutoff. Uh, you will think about a cutoff threshold, say uh, sixty percent. So if the sixty percent of shingles are common, you will say the documents are very similar. You know, depending. I, I I'm not sure how. Uh, you know what a, a typical cutoff would be. Uh, I would say 30, 40 percent is a lot as well. And uh, the size of cache angle, you know, is something uh, that needs to be uh, decided. So uh, most of the time, you know, you you will basically uh, experiment and then determine these numbers. Uh, it cannot be too small. For example, if k is one. You're basically looking at characters, one character at a time, and you will see most of the shingles will be in most of the documents, uh, or at least you know like 40, 50, 60 percent. So that's not a very good uh, number. And K cannot be too large. Also, if your shingle is too large, you are making you know exact matches of that with uh, you know the other. Uh, with, with, with the shingles in the other document, and you'll fail to find any document similarities. So there should be uh, something, you know, in between. You know, uh, it should neither be too small nor too large. And you know, this is something that we will uh, figure out. You know, while we do our uh, analysis. And from what I hear, you know, even in the document of the document that's provided in the link, the uh, the book mining of massive data sets for email data, you know, the authors say a shingle size of five is good enough. So instead of using k characters at a time, you could use you know k words at a time. And that also provides for shingles, and, and that's also something uh, that's used. Now, as I said, working with shingles is very compute intensive. Uh, in in many cases, you know, the, the computation is so much that you may you may not get answers uh, in 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 any realistic time. So we need to employ methods to simplify the shingle sets uh, to actually some representations uh, that would be easy for uh, processing. So, so one of the things we could do is hash shingles uh, to integers. Basically, hashing basically takes you takes a shingle and assigns an integer to it. So with integers, you know, the the arithmetic is easy, you know, you 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 just have four bytes, which is uh, thirty two bits of information. Uh, so you have a large shingle space and you will basically compress that into uh, the space of integers and uh, you know that that makes things uh, work much faster. So this is the first uh, thing we do. Uh, instead of shing working with shingles directly, uh, you know, work with integers that are hashed uh, shingles. And it appears that even if shingles are hashed, you know, you are looking at four times the space of each document. Uh, to represent the shingle set. Uh, the arithmetic goes this way. Uh, 
Well, I mean, uh, I think that I'll get to that in the next page. Uh, oh, actually, it's here. So, so I, I just took a string of length 75 here. I, you can see it in the second bullet here. Uh, so, so if you look at this 75 character string, you know, which represents your document, uh, the the first shingle is ASDF space, uh, which is I'm looking at five shingles, which is shingles of length five, and the second is SDF space W, etc. So you will you will look at all of those substrings until you reach uh, NDFFK, which is the last um, shingle. So you, you're basically looking at, uh, in this case, 71 shingles, right? And you, you can. If the document is of size n, you're looking at n minus k plus one number of shingles. And so if if you are, usually k is very small compared to n. And and if you're hashing to integers, you're looking at four bytes for, for each shingle. Uh, so that actually roughly gives you four times n as the size of the uh, shingles, shingle documents, and even that is large because uh, I, I just did some arithmetic here. So let's say you have a million documents, and each document has, you know, 10 kilobytes of data. Uh, if you if you if you actually look through all of this, you will be looking at 40. Uh, gigabytes of memory, and so this is just to represent the shingles. And then you need to do comparisons. You will need like half a trillion comparisons, and and that's uh, prohibitive. I, you know, you, you can't do so much, and and it gets worse if like if if you actually look at you know a speed of one million comparisons a second. Uh, You'll be looking at six days to complete it, and it gets worse, uh, maybe hopeless, if uh, if if you basically look at double the size of data. So, so uh, so so working with uh, you know hashed shingles is also uh, very prohibitive. So we need more simplification. So uh, in order to simplify, I mean, I, I guess that it's getting too long, you know, like, uh, you know, I, I'll quickly go through this. In order to simplify this, uh, so what we need to do is this. We need to find a way to represent complete shingle sets with smaller sets. And once we are done with that, uh, you know that's what min hashing does, and you know the, once we are done, even with uh, sig even when you are working with signatures, if you have a very large set, uh, and uh, it would be a good idea to you know weed out a lot of candidate pairs that can never be uh, considered for comparison. You know that's that's the uh, uh, that's what locality sensitive hashing does. So we'll quickly go through uh, what min hashing does. You know, so before we do min hashing, what so if you have documents like S1, S2, S3, etc. Uh, let's say these are the hashed uh, sh shingle IDs. Um, if this shingle appears in document S1, you'll you place a one here. If it doesn't, you place a zero here. So well, think about a representation of of documents and shingles uh, this way. So this matrix, when completed, gives you which shingle uh, is in which document. And the nature of this matrix is there will be too many shingles, and for a given document, you will not have too many shingles, uh, too many ones here, because, you know, most of these are zeros because you know you don't have all the shingles uh, in a document. So, 
so so basically uh, this is this is called a sparse uh, sparse matrix and you know computing sparse matrix you know you don't represent data this way um well that that's that's another topic that we can talk about later so once you have uh the Boolean matrix representation, shingles going this way and documents going this way. Uh, Jacquard similarity basically is you, like let's say you want to find similarity between document one, which, rep which is represented by this column and this, uh, and document two, which is represented by this. You, you'll, you will basically look at uh, the, uh, the number of rows where they both have ones and then divided by the total number of rows. So that's what gives you Jacquard similarity. Uh, and so in this case, in this example that you have there, you have three, uh, if you're looking at C1 and C2, you have three uh, rows that have one in both. And there are, uh, the, I think it's seven, there is a, there's a mistake here. So there are seven. So your Jacquard similarity is three by seven. Um, min hashing is a technique. You know, I'll put the slide out there. You know, I think we're running out of time. Uh, min hashing is a technique that will make that will allow you to represent this whole shingles matrix by much smaller matrices called signatures. And you know. Uh, the way it works, you know, is explained in these. You know, I'll, I'll put this out there. You know, I think we have too much to cover for today. Um, so what it does is, you know, it it the min hashing process will give you a set of signatures. So if you have four documents here, you'll have four shorter signatures, and you'll work with this set basically. Uh, that's the idea of min hashing. Um, again, there is theory behind this that says the probability uh, that min hashes are equal uh, will will be equal to the Jacquard similarity which we started with. So there is some uh, uh, that means if if you actually do multiple min hashings, you know you will get closer to Jacquard similarity. Uh, so that's the idea, you know, I put a link here, you know, once I post this, uh, you know, you should be able to go through this. And then the references to get a complete picture of this. Um, well, there's again some notes, you know, I think uh, it, it's going to be too much to go through most of this. And with, uh, with locality sensitive hashing, so what we do is, so what we did now is we reduce the number of rows, but still we have millions of documents represented by columns. So can we eliminate some candidate pairs that are not similar? So that's the idea of locality sensitive hashing. So uh, that's the method that you actually go through here to, uh, oh, sorry. Okay, so, so so you you will break this into bands, and then you have one more hashing technique here. So, and you break this into buckets, basically. And whatever, I mean, if if two of uh, these these rows that you see hash to the same bucket, then you have a candidate pair. And so, if, if the process spits out basically a bunch of candidate pairs, only those you would look at. And that's that set is much much smaller than all the candidate pairs uh, that you would look at. For example, in the case of million documents, you have uh, half a trillion candidate pairs. You know, if that out of the half a trillion candidate pairs, if you remove most of it and end up with let's say 10 million candidate pairs, you know, that's quite a reduction in processing. So that's the idea of locality sensitive hashing. And so the summary is, as you saw in that diagram, you know, you'll 
uh, you'll break it into k shingles uh, hash to k shingles to have uh, integer representations and you you'll basically look at min hashing to reduce uh, uh, each uh, document representation as a signature and you will use locality sensitive hashing to uh, identify the candidate pairs of uh, signatures that will actually uh, be uh, that will represent the uh, candidate pairs of documents and then once you know the candidate pair you can go to the document directly or you can look at the signatures to to basically identify whether the documents are similar so that's the process now so, so what do we achieve once we all once we do all of that uh, if if we are given a set d of n documents we have an efficient way of creating pairs of documents uh, CICJ such that the jacquard similarity is greater than a given threshold that means we set a threshold and we say documents are similar if the jacquard similarity is greater than s and uh, uh, that will be useful because le let's say you you want you, you're looking at a document and you want to find documents similar to that in that population and you know this process uh, can give you that so well, with with uh, the salon table talk data, we can do that. So that's this is what I propose to do with the first project. Um, we can talk about the uh, next steps. You know what we can do is uh, assuming that we do this implementation well, we can start looking at other problems, the other questions, other data sets, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, so. So this is what we can do. So we have another 20, 25 minutes. You know, uh, you, uh, please unmute, unmute yourself. You know, we can talk about uh, interests uh, in such a project, and uh, you know, uh, just uh, let me know what you think. Uh, uh, to unmute, you need to do star six, please. Hi, Kumar, this is Nirmal. Uh, uh, sorry, who is that, please? Kumar, this is Nirmal. Oh, hi, hi, Nirmal. Hey, how are you? Yeah, <laughs> I don't have any questions at this point, but uh, definitely I just want to thank you for the reminder because I've been missing for the last few times. Okay. Um, yeah, definitely, I think we are kickstarting the, the project, I guess. It's pretty, uh, pretty, uh, pretty good, looks good. Let's see. Thanks, as far as my interest in this right now, I mean, as I said, like my background is on the architecture and uh, security, right? So, yeah, I mean, I can take care of the admin portion of uh, the, the project, but, uh, you know, I don't have uh, development side of uh, things, but definitely I would like to see how people, uh, you know, uh, interest and uh, get things going. Sure, okay. So how many people do we have on the line today? Uh, we have 15. 15? Oh, okay, that's good. Yeah. So I see uh, uh, Anshuman, Kevin, Mary, Nirmal, uh, Mahant, Raj, yeah, Ravi, Ramnik, Roshan, Shashank, Stephen, Yashwant. Yeah. So, so, so guys, what do you think? I mean... Uh, hi, King. Uh, can you hear me okay? Uh, yeah, who, who is this? This is Shishank. Can you hear me okay? Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I can hear you, Shishank. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, uh, this is fantastic. So, Kumar, you can definitely count me in. Uh, my, I don't have a lot of uh, Amazon uh, Web Services experience. I have more of auditor experience. But mm -hmm. uh, I definitely uh, want to contribute from the development side of it. Uh, side of it, and oh, that's great, Shashank. I can do some 
yeah, and if there is anything I can do from uh, even uh, 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 bringing up Spark on AWS, I'm going to. Oh, okay. So, so you are familiar with setting up a, a Spark? I mean, like, let's say I give you yeah. four Unix machines. Yeah, I've done. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I've I've actually done it on um, on a virtual should be that different. Um, so oh, okay. I, I've done it like hundred times. I've done it uh, a couple of times. So uh, oh, okay, I'm, I'm sure. Oh, that's great. Right. Okay. That. Okay. So so uh, yeah, I mean, I'll I'll keep sending out updates on you know how things are going. You know, uh, yeah. If if uh, well, others you know. The, you don't have to answer right away. You know, it's just uh, you know, if, if some if, if there is something that intersects your interest uh, in this activity, uh, you know, we're looking at jacquard similarity of interests here, right? So, so if you look at that, so if that's greater than a certain threshold, you know, you can say you are in. Yeah. So. Yeah. Hi, Kumar Anshuman here. Hey, Anshuman. Yeah, thanks, Kumar, for inviting me. And I think I would like to go with the with the strength of mine. I would like to be a tester for this. Let let me see how best I can test. Oh, I'll sure, yeah. Try to put sure. up a plan, right? So, okay. I I would like to go with that. Sure. And if 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 I'll be, if I you'll give me a chance, <laughs> all depends. Well, on that. I mean, it, it's open <laughs> to everyone, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah thanks, I, thanks. I, I'm looking for people who can join me in this effort. So. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. So, uh, just uh, uh, just mark me for that testing part. Sure. Thanks, Anshuman. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so I'll. I'll Keep sending out uh, updates. You know, I'll post uh, you know links to this presentation uh, on the website. Uh, I'll also, you know, yeah, if you if you are basically uh, uh, you know interested in any activity, you know, there's there's a lot of things people can do. You know, it's uh, it's not just one area. Uh, so if you're interested in that, please uh, uh, let me know. Uh, I just saw a message. Yashwant says uh, uh, he would want to. He would be interested. So, so I, I don't know how to get to chat message of a particular person. Anyway, okay. Well, thanks. Thanks everyone for joining. Thank you. Good night. Thanks. Yeah. Good thanks, Kumar. It was a great one. So let's kick start. Sure. Yeah. Thanks. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Hey, thanks, Kumar. Thank you, Kumar, for setting it up. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Bye now. Bye.